Today, I want to share with you an idea of how looking uh, with the eyes of nature can help us to solve the challenges of our future. Around three years ago, my friend Alessandro and I had a conversation about social and economic development in Africa. We were looking at the main limiting factors of development, and we both agreed that one of the key limitations is missing electric power. But it's not just about Africa. There are over one billion people on the planet which do not have access to public grid power. And the absence of electricity is causing significant impacts. It's preventing social and economic development, and it also causes significant health issues. Sadly, this won't change in the near future, since it's often not economic to build power grids. The current alternative to power grids are diesel generators or solar systems. Solar systems consist of a panel and a consumer, for instance, a solar fridge. Some of the enterprises are using diesel generators, which is a bad idea because it's not good for the environment, expensive, and has to be often serviced. At this time, my friend was looking for a new challenge in his life. He wanted to learn more about how solar energy could be used to improve the life of these people. His focus was East Africa, and he decided to go there. After some time, he has learned that the installations worked well under controlled conditions, meaning that they had to be serviced and maintained by qualified people. These systems are very complex. They have to be engineered, maintained, operated, and managed. And the reality in these countries is that it's very difficult to find qualified people which are able to maintain such complex installations. And a little bit later, it was clear that these technologies are in no way suitable for individuals or small enterprises because they're way too complex and too expensive. In many African countries, the most typical enterprise is a duka. A duka is a small store which provides goods for everyday life. Many of them do not have access to electricity, and you can only imagine what kind of services and products require electricity. The owner, for instance, could have a fridge and provide perishable food or cool drinks. But one of the most required services in Africa is phone battery charging. You might be surprised to hear how widespread mobile phones are used all over Africa. And in contrast to public grid power, mobile phone coverage is very good. So many people have a mobile phone, but no power at home to charge it. And this is clearly an interesting business model for Ducas. Ducas are, of course, only examples, because there are many other types of enterprises uh, which need power. We once had to stop at a Duca because we were in need of fresh water in a small village. The Duca was run by a friendly woman, and uh, we were surprised to see that she had many different solar panels on her roof. Alessandra asked her about her experiences with the electrical systems. She told us that it was a very good decision to provide this kind of phone battery uh, charging service, and that her business was growing quickly. People all over the region came to a place in order to have uh, their phone battery charged, and some of them also stayed to have a drink or bought some goods. But then she became very frustrated because she told that her success was actually her main problem. She couldn't extend or upgrade any of these systems when she needed more power. So any time when she required more power, she had to replace the energy system with a new one that provides more power, which is surely not an economical way to do it. What we have learned in reality of these countries, what people really required was a system that could be upgraded easily by anybody. With that idea in mind, we have checked if there's not just such a system available on the market. And after some research, we saw that there is no such a system which could provide this kind of flexibility. The reason for this is because most of the technologies today are based on a centralized architecture meaning that a system has to be controlled by a master, which is controlling what the comp components of the system has to do. So we decided to start building such a system ourselves. And our vision at the time could have uh, been described with a dog sledge. Dogs have to be trained in order to do the job, which is specifically true for the lead animals. But what we had in mind was something completely different. We wanted to create a dog sledge where there was no training needed, where you just put dogs in front of the sledge and it would work. Sounds strange? 
You are not the only one that thought so, with experts and professionals from the field. The answer was always the same. It can't be done. Energy systems need a centralized architecture. But we knew that a centralized energy system will not work in the reality of these rural countries. When we thought about how this system could look like, it came to our mind that one of the most disruptive technologies of the past decades, it's not working with a centralized model. We are all using it on a daily basis, and it also has become an incubator for other disruptive innovations. It's the internet. So our challenge was to prove that the experts were wrong. It was thrilling and scary at the same time. It was thrilling because we thought that we were on the right track and that this idea really could be revolutionary. But it was scary because almost nobody thought that such a system could be built. But there was a system, or there is a system, which is the most complex system we can imagine. Have you any idea what this could be? It's not that simple to see because somehow it's hidden in plain sight. It's nature and evolution. Nature and evolution is the most complex system we know. And yet it's not based on centralized architecture. And apparently nature is doing its job quite well. So we ask ourselves, how would nature address that challenge? How would nature solve our problem? Speaking in biological terms, our challenge would be this. What kind of concept will allow us to create small to large groups of individuals where the group would behave like an organism itself? Where there was no lead animal necessary? If you now see insects, fishes, and birds in your mind, you are on the right track. Because nature's answer is swarms. A swarm in nature is based on a few principles and rules. It protects the individuals to increase chances of survival. It provides stability, nutrition, and guidance for every swarm member. A swarm principle is actually a perfect example of how a few simple rules can manage a complex system. Because in order to work, every swarm member has just to follow three rules, which is move in the same direction as your neighbor, stay close to your neighbor, and avoid collisions with your neighbors. That's all. And it's just these three rules which allow the swarm to make almost magical things. It can create from one animal to thousands and ten thousands in a matter of seconds, if required. It can split and then recombine according to the environment. It can accelerate and deaccelerate according to dangers. The swarm principle was the key for our challenge. We wanted to use the swarm principle in order to make the system easy upgradable. And we also had in mind to make it possible that users can create energy systems just by plugging systems together. It's like building Lego. We have started the development of the product last year and are planning to go to the market next year. You may ask now, is this guy talking about an idea or a vision, or is this really real? And the answer is yes, it's real. Just a short time ago, we have reached a major milestone in the development of our product. We have, for the first time, seen how Swarm connectivity came to life. We have plucked a series of prototypes together, and the lights went on. It was really a truly magic moment. And I have to admit that in that very moment, I felt humble, because somehow I felt that this is not our success, but nature's. But what swarm connectivity really means is truly fascinating. It means that electricity can be scaled easily. It also means that anybody on the planet could have electrical energy available. But more important, it would make power more democratic, because it would remove it from the independence of large companies and unstable governments. How can we not be in awe when seeing how scalable the solutions of Mother Nature are? Because our swarm principle can also be used to power not just a small shop or a little school. It can be extended to provide electricity to a large hospital. But one of the most fascinating abilities is that it can create power grids up to the size of a city. Nature gives us a clear message. Complex systems are often based on very simple rules and principles. 
The software code that we have developed for our Swarm system fits only in a few pages of text. And if you really want to understand what that means and how effective nature is in coping with uh, complexity, consider this. Your DNA code fits on one compact disk. And yet, you are quite a complex system. I think we all agree. Now, the software which you need for your mobile phone doesn't fit on one CD. It already uses two CDs. And yet, it's just a phone. Self-organizing and this central concept, like the Swarm Principle, will solve many of our today's and also future challenges. What we see today, however, is just the beginning. The future digital information age will be so complex that the centralized paradigm is no longer a valid approach for many of our challenges. What we see is the beginning because in a few years there will be additional Swarm technologies appearing on the horizon. For instance, electric mobility. There may be hundreds of thousands of electrical cars. Swarm algorithms may be used for autonomous driving, less traffic jams, and more safety. There may be swarm markets where anybody could consume or provide microservices. Or even a far-reaching idea. What about swarm money? This would be a form of money which could not be centrally controlled which its value would be automatically determined by supply and demand. Where there would no central bank be possible, and actually no bank needed. These are all potentially very disruptive technologies, but I think it's much more than just technology. The Swamp Principle could change the way how we interact and collaborate together. It could change the way how businesses work. Likely, organizations will get smaller, more flexible, more agile, and working in that way together. While there will be always some sort of central command and control in business, I think that organizational units will decrease and hierarchies will slowly vanish. What I have learned on this fascinating journey is that the concepts of the past are not the recipes of the future. And I really believe that swarm technology has the power to change the world, and the first time from bottom up. Thank you very much.